So we decided to spend the next two days just living inside the jewel. Let me show you our home for the next two nights. We've spent the last week traveling in the incredible country of Bhutan. <laughs> we came here seeking authentic experiences and that's exactly what we got. We spent the night sleeping on the floor with the local family in a rural village. We trekked to the top of a mountain to stay with monks at a remote monastery. And we slept in an unheated tent to have the opportunity to watch the sunset from a sacred mountain. It has been an absolutely incredible week in Bhutan and we would not have changed a single thing but up to this point, we've chosen adventure over comfort. So for our last day in Bhutan, we've checked into the most luxurious hotel in the entire country, the Bhutan Spirit Sanctuary. This ended up being one of the most incredible places we've ever stayed. They take all inclusive to a whole new level. Not only are all of your food, drinks, and activities included, but the wellness services are too. Which means that when you stay here, you can get as many massages as you want. Which we took full advantage of. And this isn't like any other wellness center we've ever experienced. Before you get your first treatment, you meet with a traditional medicine doctor who does a pulse reading, and then based on what she learns about your body, she prescribes treatments. I mean, I just like, I don't even know what to do right now. The other highlight of this hotel was the food. OMG, the food. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you. Lunch is an incredibly delicious five course meal, and dinner was a Michelin star worthy seven course feast. If you don't mind splurging a bit and you want to spoil yourself during your trip to Bhutan, definitely check out the Bhutan Spirit Sanctuary. Unfortunately, our stay came to an abrupt end all too quickly. You would think after 98 countries, we would learn our lesson and we would stop booking these early morning flights. Thank you. And we'll see a flight back home. Thank you for being so brave. So there are only two airlines that fly in and out of Bhutan and the only flight of the day going to Singapore left at 8.05. Singapore is not our final destination, but there's really no good way to get between Bhutan and our 99th country, so it's just one of many stops along the way. It is bumpy. We can now say we have survived takeoff and landing from one of the most dangerous airports in the world. What have you? The seat sounds awesome until the aircraft has come. We just landed in Bangkok. We're actually not getting off the plane. We're just waiting for some passengers to board and then we're off to Singapore. Singapore weather is afternoon reporting the cloudy with rain. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be arriving at Changi International Airport, Singapore. Please ensure that your seat belt is secure with all your your seat belt. Thank you. Seven hours later, we have made it to Singapore. It is currently 5 p.m. local time, and our next flight doesn't take off until midnight on Wednesday night. So essentially, we have two and a half days here in Singapore. If we're being completely honest, we are running at 110% to make our 100 country goal by the end of this year. And after back-to-back jam-packed weeks in both Bhutan and Bangladesh, we're pretty behind on work. So the plan for this long layover is to just sit behind our computers and catch up. When I was trying to figure out where to stay for our two nights here in Singapore, I realized that the most efficient use of time would just be to stay here at the airport. Plus, the Singapore airport has recently added a $1.3 billion addition called the Jewel. It's pretty much a miniature city inside of a giant greenhouse. We got to explore it for a few hours last time we were here, and it was pretty awesome. So we decided to spend the next two days just living inside the Jewel. So let me show you our home for the next two nights. You've got to 
to move it, to groove it. I like to move it, move it. Please let me go. Come on now. It's Let's get moving. Just a robot walking around the place. This place is kind of like a combination of a regular hotel room and a capsule hotel. It's very small, but it has everything that you need. We actually stayed in one of these in London, and this one is very similar. I remember the bed being very comfy. <gasps> and so is this one. I love crisp white hotel sheets. This bed actually has a button. Right now I'm in like movie watching mode with the TV. You can also obviously lay it flat like a bed. And this is sleep mode. And over here, we have a portable chair that hangs on the wall that you can put here to sit at the desk that our stuff is currently blocking right now. We have some outlets, shelves. I think that's it for the bedroom. Moving into the bathroom. Pretty simple. Sink, toilet, shower. Everything is very modern and futury looking. It smells nice, it's clean, there's free Wi-Fi. There's free coffee downstairs. So, since there's not a lot of space in the room, we're going to spend the majority of our time here in the lobby working on our computers with the view of the largest indoor waterfall in the world. I know it sounds really nerdy, but we are so excited about this workation. That's what we call them because we really enjoy days where we only work on our computers and drink coffee. And when we're in a cool place, it's just that much better. Alright, we're going to call it a night, get a little work done, and catch up on some sleep. We planned to work downstairs and then we just couldn't get out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm living my best life right now. I think the kids call this double fisting. <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing. 3.28 in the afternoon and we just pulled ourselves out of bed. <laughs> We've been working in our teeny tiny room <laughs> all day long. It's been a productive morning. It's just been in bed. Time to venture out and find some food. For the last two weeks in Bangladesh and Bhutan, we've pretty much eaten rice for every single meal. And we don't get cravings like this often, but we both really just want a good old American fat meal for lunch. Apparently so does everyone else at the airport. So, we've never been here before, but we just had to see what all the fuss was about. I just Googled, did you know Shake Sack started out as a hot dog cart inside Madison Square Garden Park in 2001? A hot dog cart to the most popular restaurant inside the Singapore airport. By far, there are more people here than anywhere else. This better be the best burger I've ever put in my mouth. A crinkle pie is so good. That's a good burger. Okay, I totally get it. I haven't even tried my burger yet. Thank you very much. Last night his health completely plummeted out of nowhere. He has a fever, he feels super tired and weak, so he just spent the morning sleeping. We are attempting to self-check so we can go to the lounge about 12 hours early. See how it goes. So besides Nate being sick, today's actually going really well. We checked out three hours late from the hotel and they didn't charge us. And we were just able to check in for our flight 12 hours early. So Nate got to sleep in and we could spend the day in the lounge. And this is our home for the next few hours. Lounge number two. This is a terrible idea. I haven't eaten in 24 hours. I think I'm feeling better. Free sushi sounded good. 
I may be very regretful on the plane later. Thank you. And after 52 hours in this airport, we are now boarding our flight to Melbourne. Thank you. <sighs> All right, it is past midnight. This is an eight hour flight to Melbourne and we will see you there. After a relatively sleepless night, we have made it to Melbourne. We collected our bags, rechecked our bags, went through security. Now we have to do our layover. Even though I'm super tired at the moment, I'm not nauseous anymore, so things are looking up. Just so glad I never threw up. I felt like I was gonna throw up for like 24 hours, but I didn't. But it's just so weird, it just like just like went away. Like normally when you when you get sick, there's like a like a climax and then it like it's the worst it can get and then it gets better from there. And I never felt like I got to that that moment. All right, short flight to Sydney. All right, about one hour later, we have landed in Sydney. We have recollected our bags because that was as far as Qantas could take us on our way to our 99th country. And now we have about three hours until we can check in for our next flight. So we're stuck outside of security, away from the lounges. We haven't seen the outdoors in so long. Like, think about it. We were just outside for like a second to catch the bus. That was the first time I've breathed outside air in like four days. <laughs> wow, it has been <laughs> quite the afternoon. The camera fell off a suitcase. The microphone broke. We had to super glue it back together. Apparently you need a return flight to enter Vanuatu, which is where we're going by the way. And last but not least, whatever the worldwide system is that checks everybody's like passports and visas before you can board a flight, it's down so like <laughs> no, nobody in this airport is moving or going anywhere. But thankfully, somehow, we are still flying to Vanuatu. We made it through and we even have a little lounge time. What a travel day it's been. What a travel week it's been. <laughs> Here we go. We're in our last Country number 99. This is crazy. It's starting to feel a little surreal. Even though we've been traveling for four days. This is the, definitely the craziest feeling. The next time we step foot in a new country, it'll be 100, which is what we've been aiming for for four years. We just sat on that flight reminiscing about setting our 100 country goal like six months in to 2016. And how at that time it just felt so un... Like the, the biggest thing we could think of. And now we're so close. 99. It's a full moon. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> we have officially entered our 99th country now. We've made it through customs. We've made it through immigration. And we're staying at a hotel that's close to the airport tonight. They said it's within walking distance. And they've sent us a hand-drawn map to get there. So... According to this, you go across the grass, which is apparently white squiggly lines, past Vanuatu helicopters, past Azure Waters, past Adventure in Paradise. And then you will get to Port Villa Airport Hotel Green Building. All right. Look, towards Vanuatu helicopters. Oh, nice. Across the grass. Okay, we're on the right track. There's Vanuatu helicopters. This kind of looks like the green building that they drew on the map. It's very hot. You're not gonna last. 
two seconds in here. Ah. Ah. <laughs> I that's what this is for. <laughs> this is so romantic. We're just getting some new passengers. <laughs> How do you think our bags are gonna fit? It is 12:16. Our flight leaves in almost exactly 12 hours. But we just learned that we can we can check our our carry-ons. Wait, no. We can check our protect luggage. We're we're gonna check. <laughs> Eight-hour flight to Melbourne. Melbourne. <laughs> I don't know why I came out like that. <laughs>